Okay, hello everyone, Victor Momo from Excel Moments and it's been a moment. I've been out all thanks to the Global Excel Summit. It's great to be back to recording videos. So sitting at the lobby back at the Excel Summit with Mr. Oz Dussoulet and we're preparing for our session the next day and guess who shows up? Mr. Bob Umless. Yes, he taught me how to pronounce his son. <laughs> and once Bob shows up, you're either going to get a question, you know, a challenge. Oh, do you know how to do this? Right? And true to it, Bob then gave me a question. But luckily, you know, Oz went to the bathroom and I grabbed the system, you know, just set up, you know, fictitious data and kind of worked out the problem. Yeah. And that's what I want to demonstrate in this video. Bob did show his solution at the Global Excel Summit, but what I want to demonstrate here is how I thought about it at the time and, you know, how I approached it. Okay, so let's look at what we have in here. I have named this aptly as bad data because the structure is really, really bad. <laughs> so when you look at it, you can see that this is the name of an individual, maybe his house address and his streets, you know, the city where he stays and the zip code, there's a blank. So this is the first record, you know, this is the second record, you know, this is the third and so on. Okay, and what you want to do is you want to sort this data as is, but you want to sort it based on, you know, the last name. So what it means is that you want to sort based on Doe, Smith, Johnson. But don't forget that this is one record. So when you sort the data, these five must always move together. Okay, so if you just do a normal sort here, you know, everything is going to get messed up. So you want to sort in a way that, you know, the records, you know, remain uh, the same. So you don't lose things in the process of sorting. So how do you go about that? So that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Right. So the first thing I thought about was, okay, one, there's some consistency. So there's a method to the madness in the sense that, yes, you know, it's not the way it should be, but it's four rows, a blank. And, you know, if you go all the way to the end, yeah, same thing there. So I'm like, okay, so since it's consistent, that's good. What I think would help is if I can transform this from a single column of data to a two-dimensional array, that's multiple columns of data. This would be, you know, first column, second column, third column, fourth, and then fifth. So once you have a situation like that, the next functions you need to think of, thanks to, you know, dynamic dynamic arrays and the new functions you have it will be wrap rows and wrap calls which allows you to change a one-dimensional array to a two-dimensional array but sometimes you have the confusion of am i using a wrap rows or am i using a wrap calls okay there are many ways to think about it but in this particular case what i know is that i know the number of columns i'm going to have per row before i go to the next row because if you think about it this is going to be transposed right so you're going to have five columns of data after that, that will be for the first record. You go to the next, you go to the next. So once you know the number of columns to have per row, then you should be using a wrap rows. Okay. So you know the number of columns to have in each row, then you use a wrap rows. Okay. So I'm going to use wrap rows. That's what I'm going to do. Start it up. And then here I select the data. I'm going to add code in this case. It says wrap count. The wrap count here means how many columns do I have on each row before I wrap, before I move to the next row. Of course, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. So I will add code that for now. Okay. And now you can see that we have, you know, the data. That seems like, okay, yeah, maybe we can start getting some things done, you know, using this. Okay. So now what we need is this first column because we want to sort by surnames, but we still need to extract at least the full names. First of all, I may use this, you know, more than once. So let me just, you know, make it a variable by using the let function. I say, let's range RNG be what you see on the screen for me to get that first column of data, which has the full names. I can use the take function. You could also use choose calls. So I can say take range, you know, and first just one column okay so what that means is that just give me the first column from here and that's the data you know you need now from here we need the last name i don't want to make it more complicated than it should be because i could say okay what if we had three names four names you know but let's just leave it as you know first name space last name so what do we do here we can just use a text after and say text after a space a text after a space obviously gives us the last name so come back in here and then you know use a text after and say text after in here you know text after a space okay so let's see what we have okay good so now you see that these are the last names so what we are just going to do basically is to sort that initial table we had that's the two-dimensional array you know sort it based on you know this array that we have here 
So what it means is that whichever one comes first alphabetically, you know, that particular record will come to the top and it will go on that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm coming here and I'm going to do sort by and I'm sorting the range. The range is what I had displayed the first time and I'm sorting it based on the result I have on the screen. Okay, so close that and then let's do enter. Okay, so you can see that now we have Brown, Davis, D. So it's all sorted based on the surname. If this changes, for example, to Alo, you know, that becomes the first one. And it's dynamic. That's the beautiful thing, you know, about it. Okay, so good. So now that we have this and we now have it sorted, the only thing we need to do now is just to flip it back from a two-dimensional array to, you know, a single column which basically means a to call. So to call is going to flip this back from 2D into 1D. Good. And let's enter. And you literally have what you want, you know, sorted, you know, alphabetically based on the surnames. Okay. There are just a few things you need to do to clean it up. The first one you see is that anywhere you are supposed to have a blank, you now have a zero, you know, based on, first of all, the general formatting. And once you use to call, that's what happens. So one way you can fix it, which is how, you know, Bob would approach it. Select, let's say, and just do a control one. Then we go into custom formatting. What we want now is to make sure that zeros show up as nothing. If not that I had, you know, zip codes that are numbers, you know, that I also, well, you could say they are numbers or you could say they are texts that look like numbers. But well, in this case, you know, they're numbers. I could say, oh, you know, just make every other thing except text show up. But let me just assume that I could have numbers in my data set. So I would say I want to see the numbers. So I may just use hash, you know, for the positive number formatting. Negative, I may say I may never have anything negative in there. So I will skip that by pressing a colon. Then I get to zeros now. So what do I want for zeros? I don't want them to also be displayed as anything. No formatting. I put a semicolon. That skips zeros. And then for the text, which is the last element there, I just use an at, which is saying, just show me the text exactly as it is. And you do okay. Right? And once you do this, you can see that based on the formatting now, zeros are showing up, you know, as nothing. But every other is fine. Text are fine. Numbers are fine. So this one way you fix it. But sometimes, really, you want to fix the problem rather than, you know, rely on formatting. Right? If you ask me. So, okay. I can do a control Z, let's bring it back and let's do this you know the long way which is basically just saying if it's zero show up as a blank if not you know show the result so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make this a variable and say let this be called result so everything you're seeing right now on the screen is called result so what do i want to display i just use an if here and i say if result is zero you know show me nothing otherwise you know show me results that's basically what it is okay so let's see okay good so now you see that we have what we need and everything kind of looks fine so if you flip this and you make this zo you know or you may say zoe all right that should go to the very bottom of your data set okay right and that's exactly what you have the other thing i may just want to do is to get rid of that five there and the hard coding you know i did that you know just <laughs> because i wanted to just make it you know quick but the point is you want to make it dynamic in a way that if it happened that instead of each record having five rows each one had four for example you know yes you can easily just come and change you know this five to four but you may want to actually derive that using a formula so let me just do that so i'm going to create a variable i'm going to call that variable count you know like cnt just to say okay i mean what is the number of columns i'm supposed to have per row so i now would derive it just mathematically in my own head first thing i would need to know is that how many you know rows do i have in my table so if i have 100 rows in my table and i have maybe 10 blanks then i just do 100 divided by 10 and it tells me that there are 10 records that's basically what it is because the number of blanks you know corresponds you know to the number of records because with every record there's a blank so first thing i would just need to know is how many rows do i have in my table so i could use it function like rows and say rows of this and i divide it by number of blanks i have which you know count blank it's just my own way of solving it <laughs> there are always many ways to solve a problem right so i can do count blank of the same thing okay so close that right so basically that will give me you know what i need so in here where i have five i'll change this five to cnt you know that becomes you know what you use all right and you basically have the same thing so it's just me trying to break down 
well, you may say a simple problem, but taking my time so that you can really understand the building blocks and some of the concepts which you may be able to apply in solving your own problem. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel, Excel Moments. Thanks for hanging with me for about 10 minutes. For now, I'm out.